We're live. Ta-da! And this time it's not blowing out eardrums like the last time. So hey everybody, welcome to another live session uh, with uh, us doing the Sea Dragon. I did pronounce that right, Sea Dragon, yeah. Um, and I was just told moments before that there is an update to the modding toolkit. And you can see here that several parts of it, if we go back here, have actually been updated six days ago. And I have apparently not known about this for six whole days. Um, so there are some new modules and some apparently pipe fixes and stuff. So what I'm gonna do is actually go here and we get the scripts and I'm gonna click on scripts and hopefully this is gonna let me do what I want, which is not delete the directory. No, I wanna download the directory. Hmm. Come on. How do we do this? Save link as? I think it's just gonna try to save a page. Yeah. Don't make me download the whole thing. Oh, it's gonna make me download the whole thing. Okay, fine. So we're gonna go code and we're gonna download the zip file. It's gonna download. It takes a few seconds to do so. Hello everybody. Uh Broch is here, or Brioche, now that I've figured out that you're named after bread. Uh BNL uh, uh, W is here. Uh Prime is here, 252. And there's a couple other people watching but haven't commented in the chat. If you have any questions, just tag me in the chat with a bunch of question marks. And I generally check it um, midstream when we're usually waiting for the computer to do something. So I'm going to show you guys here quickly. This is how you basically up update the modding toolkit. Step one, close the modding toolkit. Don't have it open when you do this. It will cause you a host of problems. Step two is to open up that directory. Now I happen to have it here. Um, so I know exactly where it is right there. Step three, we downloaded it already. So we're going to open it up, open here and we're going to go modding toolkit. And I think it was assets scripts. This is where all the stuff that was updated. And we're just going to go here and do the same thing. Uh, we're going to find the modding toolkit right here. Uh, we're going to find assets and you can see here that we have scripts. So this is the old script. This is a new script. The new script has all the new stuff. So we're just going to drop it in. Boom. There we go. We got to wait a couple seconds for it to go. And then hopefully, yeah. So brioche or uh, brioche, uh, depending on where you are, because there's the British way of saying it and the American way of saying it. Oddly enough, it's going to ask me to replace apparently 404 files. I'm going to say yes and hope I don't break uh, my thing right off the bat because yeah, uh, would not surprise me. And then we're going to reopen the program. Uh, so I've got Unity Hub here. And I'm going to open this up. And hopefully it's going to load without any problems. If we have some problems, I'm probably going to go and reverse that. And then I'll figure it out later. But there are definitely some new fancy tools coming in that I wish I knew about six weeks ago. But that would have, or six days ago, that would have made my life a little bit easier. But it allows me to do some pretty advanced stuff. So how badly is it? All right. Uh, scripts are warning possible, possible, possible. Do, do, do. Okay, I think we're good. Um, we'll see how this comes in. If there's anything crazy that requires it that I'm working on. There's a couple little errors and stuff like this um, that occur uh, just because of the way it is. Uh, and you can fix them, don't worry about them. I just wanna make sure this is gonna go through and for the stuff that we're working on today, isn't gonna have a problem, but, and apparently it's gonna come up with a whole bunch of things. Not sure why we have a bunch of duplicates, but there you go. Oh, I, yeah, okay, some of these are not mine. I've been helping some other people fix things. And apparently duplicate uh, polygon mesh. Huh, right here, well, I will fix those later, that's fine, okay. Cool. So let's get to Space Flight Simulator. So this is where we were. This is where you want to see. We're just waiting to see a few more people come in. But we have it here where this is our Sea Dragon parts. And as we learned last week, we had some problems. And there's a lot of problems with these things. Things like they're not named properly at all. Uh, things like this guy here came apart and it's got different pieces. And obviously the pieces aren't properly aligned. And if we switch to outside view, this is what really messed us up. This part here, the outside is actually currently uh, toggled inactive. So it basically drops the whole shuttle on it. 
In addition, I found out that last week when I stripped out some of the code from this launch escape system, it actually was supposed to be there. So first thing we're going to do is put it back because, yeah, um, I do. We have one functional part. And then we'll, again, fix all these problems and make our way down to the rocket. Near the end of the stream, we're probably going to uh, uh, quickly make up some engines. It won't be looking perfectly, probably, but they will be at least functional engines. And then we'll do another liftoff test, maybe one or two, and uh, see if we can uh, get this thing to take off the ground and at least hopefully work the way it's supposed to. So that's what we're up to. Um, again, if you have any questions or you're watching the replay, let me know in the comments. If, and uh, let's get to it. So we're going to, oh, and then here's a Saturn uh, uh, 5 for, you know, size comparison. Because the one th good thing we have about this is I'm at least 99% confident this is all sized properly. So that that's something we are pretty happy with. And we're just going to exit the Space Center, exit. And then we're going to go see what we got here. And if any of our parts come up, and of course, yeah, super Drag Drake over. So the dragon capsule, by the way, too, is what I've been working on recently. So yeah, there's still some errors, although I know why there's duplicate link modules, but there shouldn't be polygon colliders. Great. I have two polygon colliders and a no mesh filter. That's gonna be fun to fix. Okay. But that's not the end of the world. And there's a whole bunch of other stuff. But we won't worry about that because nothing on this list, as far as I can see, is related to the dragon. Okay, so Sea Dragon here, we have all these prefabs set up. And I'm just gonna go over here. Is there a change log for M uh is there a change log for the mod toolkit? There is, as far as I know, no change log for the mod toolkit. Uh there is no change log for uh Space Flight Simulator, and there is no like unless you you have to turn on your computer. They, they don't really announce when they update things too much. So it's sort of a guess what is new. Now, if you want to know what's new, if you go here, it'll say six days ago. So you can go in here and look and say, okay, what six days? And you can just go through the assets um, and follow sort of the six day thing. That's how I know it's just the scripts that are uploaded. And then we go parts here. And then we have six days. Yeah, scripts and then here. So they've made some updates to the pipe fixings, the meshes. Uh, they made some surface or uh, textures, some modules in Unity, and then they fixed something here. But if we go to, I think it's modules, utility here, and you have here, yeah, activation zone module. Um, so that's new, and that is the the new um, big module for the modders. Basically, what it does is it allows you to have it where you can set up different zones will do different actions. So you can have one part do multiple things depending on where people click on it, which is really useful because um, up until now, I've been doing some really weird and fancy things that surprisingly haven't broken Space Flight Simulator to be able to do some of the crazy stuff that I've been doing, but it's kind of like half breaking uh, the code. And now that that code's there, I'm gonna be able to rework a bunch of parts so that you click in a certain spot and it'll do certain things, which makes it a lot more easier to uh, have things like a parachute bay, a um, docking port, and all this other stuff jammed into like the capsules and the landers and stuff like that, where before you'd have to have like multiple different pieces. So that is the important part. But yeah, there's no actual change log. It's sort of a guess and play. And then, you know, as you talk to other modders, they'll tell you about stuff. And then you're like, oh, cool, there's this new thing I can do. And if you guys ever do have something you see in my parts and you're like, how did you do this? Just let me know. Um, I can probably explain it to you or worse comes worse. I'll just send you the prefab and then you can, you know, have a poke at it. I'm, I'm not against uh, the sharing, caring um, thing. So there you go. So we're going to go back to here. Uh, this is our... Um, uh, blip, blip, blip. This is our launch escape system. Uh, we call, I call it Sea Apollo uh, simply because it is the Sea Dragon and the Apollo uses the same unit uh, because the Sea Dragon basically was, let's make Apollo really big um, and some other craziness. But the launch escape system is the same. Now, in here last week, I stripped out, we had the RCS altitude system and we had the jettison system which I incorrectly thought we didn't need the motor system. So if we go to, and I'm going to hopefully find it here. 
the original one. This is the last, this is the other one that we had. It had the altitude system, the jettison system right here, but it also had the booster. And that's actually what it ended up using was the booster. So I boo-booed on that. I took the booster out. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to copy it because it just makes it easier. I'm going to go to Sea Dragon and I'm going to paste it here. So we have our own copy and I'm just going to call, we're going to remove this so we don't have two versions of it popping up. And I'm just going to call this less old. And we're going to basic, well, we're going to basically move the stuff from here onto this guy here or vice versa. But it shouldn't be too hard because the jettison system is separate RCS system. So I just need the tower booster right here. And then I think I can just do it that way. No, I think I have to copy the. Yeah, so there's the tower booster system. Yay. Yeah, um, Brioche is uh, right. It looks a bit thick. It apparently is supposed to be that size. Um, but we, as always, we'll check things as we go through. Um, but uh, if I show it here, I think it's this one here. This is it side by side with the drawing. And if we take the drawing here and we move it over, you can see it matches perfectly with the drawing um, for scale. This is what we did in the first episode to make sure that our Sea Dragon sizing was correct. Or again, as correct as, oops, sorry, I hit the mic, as correct as we could possibly do. So let's uh, get back to this. So this had the motor system and this um, jet system. And I ended up using the jet system for the motor system. So that was the, the big giant mess up that I made last week. Because what happens is if we look here, um, the activation sequence is the booster fires, the and right now the jettison sequence, and then the detach uh, sequence starts and that detaches it from the capsule. And then you have this RCS system at the top here. Um, where's the RCS system? Oh, it's not even turned on right now. Toggle on. Can we even see it? Hmm. And the RCS system is way too high. Um, so we have to bring that down. Yeah, I gotta bring that down to there. And apparently all the audio is too low now. Goody. Ignore the dog barking in the background. So where is this audio? Is it here? Probably in here, isn't it? Yeah, it probably is. Okay, well, it's there for now. But um, so yeah, so we have this RCS system that we have to put in. The LES didn't have RCS. Oddly enough, yeah, it did. Um, I, I Googled it and it says it did. Um, Apollo RCS launch. Uh, launch. Escape tower. I'm not kidding. Like, that's what I thought. I didn't think it had it, but apparently it had uh, the uh, uh, altitude control system or something like that in there. Trying to see here. Um, open it up. So you have the launch escape motor, which is right here. You have the tower jettison motor here, but then you have the pitch control motor right here. And the pitch control motor is essentially the uh, RCS system. I'm, I'm calling it RCS, but it's the pitch control motor. Um, so yeah, oddly enough, the launch escape tower did have that uh, brioche. I am as shocked as you are. And that's why I, originally I stripped it out and I was like, oh no, we don't need one of these motors. Boom, gone. And then I looked at it and said, oh no, no, it's actually there. So yeah um sort of interesting uh but uh yeah so it just does left or right essentially which is what the launch escape system for um space flight uh space launch system does as well so there you go um i have no idea why it's there but the drawing doesn't lie or maybe it does i don't know learn more from let's see here 
yeah so anyway i'm gonna add it in because it takes two seconds and show you how to fix parts which is always a useful thing um it is if i grab the altitude control system right at the very top of the rocket so we're just going to stick it right up here which we probably have to numerize it i, I say numerize it but uh boop, 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 boop. here we go uh we have to pick the source location so the source location if that zero zero is one two three four five six eight i'm gonna say eight up there you go and it's gonna be right here and it just has left or right that's all it is and then we're going to change the box um instead of having the holes uh which is what it has because it's from the other one i'm just gonna call it uh flat and i think it's flat smooth four is what we're using so it's just going to meld right in and you won't even see it but it's there and if you use it it'll activate so that's good there and then as i said we use the jettison system here what's this oh this is the sound um yeah so we use the jettison system for our our motor system so we need to re-add the motor system and then make sure that we write it so that the motor system is now the jettison system that is crazy, um, but uh, yeah, uh, I agree. The altitude control system was not as ro uh, robust as the Orion, and we should probably make some changes to it um, to make it not as powerful because, you know, right now, what is it doing? Its thrust is 1.5, so let's say 1.25. Let's just drop it down and say 75. You don't really want to use it, but it's there if you so deem it. Hello, Island Waffle. Welcome to the stream. As we are fixing the LES for the Sea Dragon, and hopefully this will get done faster than if I stop talking about this other thing. So, Tower Booster. We're going to copy the Tower Booster, and we're going to move it over here, like so. There's the Tower Boosters. Uh, now, the Tower Boosters are running on all the code I just stripped out. So it's got fuel percentage, booster primed, throttle, mass, um, and there's no heat. So I need to go to the jettison control system. And you know what? I'm going to move some stuff here just to make this a little bit cleaner. Move this all up here. That under the lower tower. There we go. So we have our jettison system, our RCS altitude system, or what do they call it? Pitch control motor, that's what it was. Okay, so this is called the pitch, oops. Pitch control motor. There you go. It's just a name in here, it doesn't matter. And then we have the tower boosters, which is gonna, we're gonna rename the jettison system. Uh, so this is actually our booster. And this is our jettison. Okay, cool, and it's all backwards, but that's okay. Um, what we want to do is make sure the booster isn't calling anything. So it's booster is, is jet percentage. Um, it should be jet throttle, jet mass. Okay. And then booster primed should be jettison primed. So that's all saying jet, even though it's the booster. I know it's it sounds backwards, but I just don't want to break too much stuff here. And then the jettison system is now our booster and it's completely backwards because it also kicks out mass. Dang it. Dang it, dang it, dang it. Yeah. Um, oopsie, oopsie. Okay, so we have to copy the numbers over. Aha! So the booster is now going to be here. Great. All right, so the Jetson system, I'm not going to worry about um, the numbers. I'm just going to steal it from the booster. And that's all backwards. So basically, I want these numbers here to go into the actual booster now. So we have 7.2, 7.2, dry mass percentage, I think we said was 10%, yeah. Um, and then what was the last number? The mass comes out at 6.7. Oh, uh, okay, yeah, that's gonna be updated. But let's just go here and we'll say, all these great numbers are right here. Righty. Okay, so, 7.2 jet percentage it should be fuel percentage jet through percentage okay 
super surprised. Oh, why am I looking at this odd? <laughs> hey, Felix, welcome. And Balta is also here. Okay, uh, things are going well. We're just trying to fix um, the mistake I made last week as I'm trying to show you guys all the steps, not skip anything um, because I don't want you guys to get confused. And if you guys want to basically follow along, theoretically, you end up with a sea dragon exactly the same as mine. Um, which is messed up in horrible ways. <laughs> okay, so those numbers there. Now this guy here, this wet mass is 0 0.5. Remember that. Um, and that mass is there. And this is going to end up being like 0 0.5. Okay, booster is jet mass 7.2 plus 7.2. Uh, is the mass plus the jet mass. Um, that doesn't have to change. It's just going to be a little different. And then we have it here where thrust left, thrust right. Okay. Um, based off of the throttle. Now, in here, we have to make sure that the nozzles and everything here for this controller here is now jet throttle instead of regular throttle. And then nozzle left control is this. Oh, over here. Is it not? Nope. Booster fire, okay. Booster fires. Where's the controller for this to make it show up? I have misplaced it, haven't I? Um, the tower. This is where we're just trying to find the uh, thing that turns it on. No, it's in the actual booster itself, isn't it? No, this just does throttle. Hmm. Huh. Okay. I do not know where that code is. So in Jettison, we have the Jettison code, which has the, the, the motion thing here. And what we're going to do here is it's thrust left, thrust right, left, right. Okay. So there's the four pieces here for that. And we're just going to go through here. And we're going to say, okay, this is the flame holder. Okay. So the only thing I don't need is actually these, these engine pieces. So I don't need this and I don't want this. This is the actual, the nozzles. So we're going to strip the top nozzles out and then you'll see what I'm going to do here. So we do need this thing here. We don't really need this, do we? No, nope, but we're going to take it anyway. There you go. And then we can get rid of that. And that engine's gone. And we're going to do the same thing for the other two, which is basically grab these, move them over here, delete the engine, grab this two here, move them over here, and delete the engine, and grab these two here, move it over here, delete the engine. Now the engine's gone. Yay, isn't that great? And then you're like, but where is it gonna come from? It says surface for cover is required. Right, I deleted that. All right. Um, okay, well, we'll fix that in a second by picking any other surface that we have. Not the lower tower, I want the upper tower. Okay, and then what we're gonna do here is because we can move these, we're going to move them like this. I know this is like the cheapest thing you've ever seen. And then we're just going to make them smaller. Like so. So they almost line up. There you go. Because these things run for about two seconds or so down and a little bit wider out. Actually, you know what? There's an easier way of doing this. I am overly complicating things. So thrust left. We're going to say this is three. There you go. Thrust right. We're going to say is negative three. And we're just doing this because it's easier than trying to fix the code the other way. And at the end of the day, there we go. And then if we go like that, and we go to our booster and we hide that. We hide the boosters as well. Great. 
icon to activate. We need to move them slightly. So we're just going to move them ever so slightly and up. And yeah, they're going to use the same nozzle. I don't, I don't care that much. Um, as, as wrong as this probably is, don't tell Brioche who's watching the stream, <laughs> who didn't even know about these things. Which I can't blame them. Like there's there's a certain level of this stuff is a little nuts. Um and we're gonna go up and we're gonna go there. Yeah. Totally that's why I say this stuff is semi accurate, so people can't or semi realistic. People can't get super angry if things are off. Why am I doing this the wrong way? I got one of these light shows is a second here. Okay, so I'm going to disable this one. There you go. And I'm going to disable... Oh, I didn't want to disable the nozzle. Shoot. Toggle active. I want to disable the booster, the whole booster. There we go. Um, but for some reason, we have one side is really weird. That side, left. Left two. Okay, left three. We're just going to move it off here. So that's in the right spot. It's this one here. No, that's in, why, why am I, um, right. Okay. Just gonna move that in the right spot then. I want them to overlap each other. It's essentially what we're trying to do here. Okay, and we're gonna go like that. And then if we engage the booster back on, like so, boom. So there you go. So if you double tap it, it's going to use both of them to detach and everything's gonna work out really well. So says the fellow with two pitch control motors. Yep, yep, that's what we're going with. <laughs> Because you might want to pitch it one way, you might want to pitch it the other way. You know, in 2D world, that's how it works. Yeah, if you haven't had a chance to uh, install his Apollo mod, definitely uh, go look at it. I know I have mine that will be done as soon as we finish the the spacecraft part of um, this whole uh, mod. But uh, yeah, no, uh, Brioche's uh, Apollo mod is... Uh, on a totally different level that is for sure okay so we've got this sort of figured out um and now the big question we have here is did i make any terrible horrible mistakes so left left thrust left the rest of okay so that makes that all active so that's active so i need to put that in there Put this in here. I need to put this in here, and I need to put that in there. Otherwise, it will not go. Yeah, left one, two. Yeah, okay, that's it. Left one, two, three. Okay, good. So that will fire the jettison motor, and the jettison motor is going to go with the uh, eject system. So we're going to go back up here to our control system where we have the detach mode. We're going to add this. We're going to find the jettison now. So J E T and jettison. There we go. And we're going to add the booster fire. So the first, um, so the first click will launch the. Well, I guess it's, they're all in the same spot now. But we'll launch the actual launch escape system, which will fire these three rockets, the red ones, and then the next click will actually launch the. Uh, um, jettison so it'll detach from the module and then it will uh, fire enough of the jets to clear it from the module and I know from the Orion testing etc that the settings on these are really good um, for um, actually being able to eject etc the only thing you got to be wary of is that if you are in space and you're almost in orbit and you fire off the uh, the booster by double clicking on it 
the ejection system will put itself um, into deep space. Um, but then that's what's needed to, to lift the module off of a rocket that's currently got full, full blow uh, firepower going underneath it, like if the engines are running at full tilt. So you can see there, um, and voila. So hopefully this is working. And we're going to now move on to trying to fix some of the other parts. So that's working. We don't need this anymore. So we're just going to delete that as it's old. Um, delete, unpack, whatever. It doesn't matter. Um, we have the Apollo capsule that looks like absolute garbage, but we're going to make it look nice later. Um, but uh, right now, theoretically, it works. Other than I think it's calling itself the Apollo. Yeah, it's probably Apollo capsule. So here we're going to go here, launch escape system, which is bad. Okay. Uh, we're going to go through and we're just going to make sure Apollo heat shield. We're just checking all the names. So like this here, this is, you know, this is this, this sea dragon uh, cargo uh, fairing. And it's, <laughs> it's a giant fairing. There you go. And then this here theoretically works. The only problem we had was that we hid some pieces. Um, you can see they're here. So we got to toggle those back and it's got a giant NASA logo on it right now, which apparently extends upward and gets very funky. So we're going to remove that by just going here and picking white, boom. And then on the other side, we're going to pick white as well. And again, this is just uh, the fairing. Um, all we did was we, we changed the uh, sizing, etc. This is just literally an oversized fairing. Uh, so we picked white. We could pick the fairing code if you want to, and it'd have a line through it. But in theory, that works exactly like every other uh, fairing does. So the minute you click it, it splits off and it goes left or right. So there we go. Okay, so, and it's named properly now, right? Yeah, Sea Dragon Fairing K. Um, its mass is four tons. I don't think four tons is enough for something that big. Uh, let's see if there's code that makes it four tons or if it's just there. Um, magnet module's in the right spot, okay. So theoretically, this should be good. We just decide um, what tonnage we want on this whole fairing thing. I think four tons is probably too little. I'm going to say 10, um, but we can check that a little bit later. We're going to go here. This is the first stage tank. Um, this gave us some problems, I think. So we're just going to double check that it is, again, it's just a giant tank of fuel on the first stage. Um, and if we go here, do, 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 we have some numbers. And it says this, so we're going to say, uh, okay, and it's just, there you go. It's not, it doesn't have to be too crazy. It just has to be there. And we've got um, this going there. And I don't think there's anything, oh, yes. We did have some problems. So first of all, these magnet modules are completely wrong. Uh, they are not in this position. So one is in position zero, because this is zero, zero right here. And then the other one is in one, two, three, I think it's 10, 20, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, 27, 27 up. Uh, because it, it connects right here, I believe, with the the top layer um, of our ejector system. So we're going to say 20 for now. We might have to move that. But that will allow us to have the magnet points in the right spot. Again, we're looking at it here as this is it right here. And 20 is where it sort of crosses this point right here. Although, if you scroll up here this part here probably needs to move down, but we'll do that in the game. All right, next thing we have is, this is the second stage. So we're gonna go here and go Sea Dragon second stage. 
rockets because this is eventually going to have rocket code in it for our motors. And this is our uh, second stage rocket fairing. Uh, I don't know what we'll call it, skirt. We're going to call it skirt. Cool. Um, and we're going to add motors into this uh, a bit later in the stream. But basically, it's a giant tank and it'll have rockets. Pretty straightforward, but there you go. Then we got this guy here. This is the um, Dragon second stage tank. It is basically a giant tank of fuel. And there's a discussion on how high it's supposed to be, but for right now, that is, um, it's the right height for the whole thing, but we might wanna move it down and increase the, the payload bay if we want to. Um, and Brioche, and it says that he's saying, read my Discord pins. So apparently I'm getting in trouble on Discord. Uh-oh. <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> How much trouble am I going to get into there? Um, to which he's probably going to explain to me that in a 2D world, pitch doesn't exist. <clears throat> it's only roll, which might be accurate, but we shall see. So we're looking at a giant tank. Um, then we have this. This um, is the second stage it's from the pedal tube bearing. So we went and made some changes, um, but uh, this is the uh, uh, Sea Dragon, I don't know, separator. And opens to release the first stage. And this gave us some trouble last week because while it looks in the right or orientation here, it in fact um, still comes up the wrong way. So. This is a pretty easy fix. I say that realizing it's probably not the easiest thing to fix, but right now it's, it says negative one. We're just gonna call it one. This is how it pops up in game because the orientation module in here also says one and this should say negative one. And that hopefully will flip it. So now let's think two seconds. I think we're good. Yeah, we're gonna put this pack into uh, Space Flight Simulator. Now, I did make one change since last week, which was I had it in Spacecraft. I moved it over to the Apollo pack, um, which is just simply because the Apollo pack isn't released and I'm trying to release a Spacecraft pack. So I don't wanna, I'm causing people confusion when they're like, oh, there's some Sea Dragon parts in there. Um, Cause then people were trying to use them and uh, they were broken really badly, um, which caused a lot of people to send me DMs and say, hey, this doesn't work. And I'm going like, yeah, I know. <laughs> That's why it says beta on it or alpha, which I should probably put alpha in there just to make it sure. There we go. Awesome. All right, see what's guy in the chats. Say something, slow-mo is on, vice versa. The role does not exist in 2D. Role does not exist in 2D. Okay, so one of the, oh yeah, I guess role doesn't exist in 2D. Although it would be cool if Roll existed in Space Flight Simulator. Um, that I think would be pretty darn cool. Um, but then I have my own thoughts on if I were to do it, how would I do it differently? Um, and the only reason I say Roll would be cool is because when you're launching space shuttle type missions, um, basically the way you have to launch them in Space Flight Simulator because it's 2D is completely backwards to how they'd actually launch on an actual pad. Um, so let's see here if everything works the way it should, or if we've really broken something with this update. Whoops. Don't want to do that. Delete the old one. There we go. And then we're going to go into space flight simulator and see what we can get here. So far. Reference script in this behavior game national is missing. Interessant. All right, I don't know what that is, but hopefully let's see if it's not broken. Probably is broken, oh no. Okay, so if we go to Apollo Saturn V, the pieces show up, that's good. I'm gonna toss this thing. This opens, okay, so it's still broken in terms of opening and closing, but at least it's oriented correctly. That I'm gonna call a win. So let's put this rocket together um, again, we're just putting it together to see if it actually all works together and there's nothing exploding, which there might be. 
and I don't know why that's off by. Okay, I'm gonna delete this. So that is there. So that's not right. Okay, so we're just gonna fudge this a little bit. That has to be two five. So this is something, again, we're gonna have to fix alignment on some stuff as we go. But for right now, I just wanna make it work and put it all together and make sure there's nothing. There we go. Is it touching? It's not touching, it needs to touch. Okay, 48. There we go. It's the launch escape system. Okay, so all this goes on top of the second stage. And all this goes up and goes on top of that. And then all of this here goes up to here. And we add in this piece here. And it's supposed to touch the bottom. Does it? Well, no. Yes. Yeah. Okay, good. And then we have this giant thing. And it needs to go about right there. And then if we hit this button here, that is our sea dragon with some obvious uh, boo-boos. Now, the only problem we have is if we want to launch this into space, we need to move that over one. No, it's going to go there. So we got to figure out why this is a different lining than that. Well, maybe we could just left, right, left, right, no, left, right, no. So to figure out why that's uh, split here, it's probably two different codes or something, that's fine. And then we have this and we wanna grab some engines because we need to figure out how to lift the structure up. I'm gonna delete the thing so we can see what we have. And of course the mass doesn't show up because there's a boo-boo somewhere, but that's okay. Engine wise, what do we have? I think the biggest engines I have are the Griffin engines. Uh, the Griffin engines were made by ASOD, I'm 90% sure. Um, and this is sort of his big engines. I haven't released my big engine pack yet because uh, it's not done. <laughs> Don't ask about it. It will eventually maybe get finished. Um, I don't think we can double these up. No, we can't. Um, unless... Eh, we'll do it like this. I have no idea if these even have enough power to actually launch the rocket into space. There might be one of these... No hopes in H. We need the actual Sea Dragon engine to do this. But we're going to launch it and see what we end up with. Hmm. Sure. That's always good. Zero thrust. Okay. On, 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 on. Oops. Oh, it's going up in the air. Okay, so we don't have anything on the second stage. So this is definitely not going to make it to space. But... At least it gets us up in the air so we can test the top cargo bay and the ejection system, which is what we just theoretically fixed. We go RCS on. Okay. There we go. And I'm going to go like this. And I'm going to press this button. And it should split apart. And the booster is not going. Why? Oh, it cannot ignite a covered booster. But I can apparently eject it. Okay. So, um, we have to figure out why the booster is not ejecting out. That's not the end of the world. But other than that, it seems to be working. Um, yeah. Okay, so we're going to uh, revert to build here. Or sorry, revert to launch. We're going to launch it one more time because it's something else I want to just test. Um, it's not a big deal, but I want to test the lower section here to see if it actually detaches. Um, so... And also, I'm kind of curious how high it actually gets on the fuel that's in there. Although, we could possibly go here and transfer the fuel over. Um, we might be able to make this space. <laughs> uh, which, also, we can see here at the center gravity points, which is where these fuels pop up, are in the wrong locations. So, we do need to move those as well. Um, so, if I press this button here, it opens up and it drops the first stage. Okay, so that actually works other than... 
it's in the wrong location for some pieces, but okay. And then if I pop this here, that's gonna explode everything underneath it. Okay. Um, understandable. <laughs> it's falling in gravity, but this here does not want to go because it's covered booster. All right. So the covered booster probably taking this lower section here, and since it's taking the lower tower, it's saying it's covered by the actual capsule. So we're gonna move it to the upper uh, booster as well. But we do know if we press it again, I'm just going to do this because I think this is going to look a little bit more impressive. There it goes. All right. And then we have our capsule here and I don't, yeah, it has a parachute installed in it. And that's where the new code that we're going to be playing with um, is going to come in where you click up here at the top. It does the uh, docking. If you click, say, down here, it'll like, activate the parachute or vice versa. Because it does actually have a parachute, and if we zoom down far enough, because we do have a heat shield, I'm not worried about anything. There you go. We click it, and it engages this parachute. And this is the same parachute I have in a couple capsules, so I need to change it because apparently uh, Apollo comes out with uh, two drogue shoots and then four main parachutes, whereas this guy only has one drogue chute. And as we go lower, you'll see what the heck is going on in the chat. Right. Okay, and then it has three parachutes where it should have four. So that's what I'm gonna be changing um, a bit later to show you how to do that. But yeah, it's just the wrong number of parachutes as we come to a landing here. And you can see here that, you know, we're good. And if you want to, you can drop the shield. Doesn't do much. Um, and it'll say, hey, welcome to Earth. And there we go. So, exit, close, all that good stuff. Uh, and we're back here. So, I'm going to move this across over here to off to the other monitor, which currently has a giant sus. Um, I don't even remember what those things are called. Among Us People's Astronauts or something in the chat for some strange reason. Um, thank you, Cedric, apparently. Um, cool. And... Uh, we're going to make some of those changes that we noted. So first change we're going to make is on this thing here. So the, the jettison system worked perfectly. The tower thing that turns it works perfectly. The booster said it was a covered booster. So yeah, so this is what we did. We used the lower tower as our covered booster. And because we did that, um, it's, the, it's actually covering. So we have to move it to something else. So we're going to move it to the upper tower. So now the upper tower is the quote booster, if you want to call it that. Um, and that way it's not going to be covered and therefore we're good to go. Um, whereas when we covered it with lower, it was saying, oh no, I'm already covered. Um, also want to double check while we're here. Uh, we want to check the center of mass because the magnet is negative three. One, two, three. Okay. The center of mass, however, is where I'm blanking on where we write the center of mass. Oh, there it is. It says it's five, so it's way too tall. Um, the center of mass is more like two. So we're gonna put it right here. That's gonna be the center of mass. Similarly, when we went here to this block here, the center of mass is currently height divided by two, that's fine. Um, this guy here, when it separated, it blew up a lot of stuff. So we're going to have to, uh, figure out what to do with this to make it not blow up stuff, but otherwise it did separate. So that's good. Um, this guy here, the center of mass was totally in the wrong spot. It's saying height negative two, but I believe if we click this, the sizing is zero to 27. So the height negative two is wrong it should just be height um divided by two but i think the height isn't as the height isn't even used so 27 what's the top here 48 so 48 divided by two it's going to put us down 24 but the top isn't as nice so we're going to say the center of mass is 20. 
which we can, if we want to get really particular, we can really nail it down. But being somewhere about the center of mass being here is better than the center of mass being all the way down here. And similarly, we're going to go to this guy here. The center of mass is going to be zero right in the center. The C dragon part here, this guy here again, um, this part is um, zero to 42. So 42 divided by two is uh, 21. So that's the center of mass here. Again, a lot of the stuff is code from uh, parts that were adjustable since the C dragon is just one size. Uh, we're just going to hard code it in. And here, the height. Yeah, okay, that's fine. Divide by two. Because this actually does have height in its coding. So that's good. And I think we went through. Did we change all these? No, we did not. So one position is zero. And the other position is one, two, three, forty, two. And we're just putting the modules in the right spot. Stuff I wouldn't normally worry about, but when you start having lines everywhere, it starts to get a little eh, scary. There we go. And position negative one height. Okay, cool. Done. Awesome. All right. And Felix has tagged me, and he does he have a question? Felix, do you have a question? Or are you just writing SUS for no apparent reason? But okay. Um, and then people asking about snapping. And Brosh, Brioche is at the edge of man. He got to fix that pitch motor. All right, all right. I am looking here. You leave for two seconds, and this is what people start sending. Where? We even. Jules, I don't know what's going on here. There's so many comments in here. Like, I'm looking here at the, uh, like, there's a, there's an Among Us. There's unreleased content. Yeah, yeah, okay. You guys are like eagled eyed and then there's but I don't see the comments on all right cool well I have no idea um, and apparently I'm tagged somewhere here right okay cool so apparently there's a bunch of stuff here but not good thank you thank you guys um really really enjoyed that uh by the way, that's the Discord server. If you haven't joined yet, definitely join because that's where you learn about all the cool stuff. Uh, unless you have eagle eyes and you watch um, some of the stuff that I accidentally leaked in the lives that I didn't mean to. Uh, <clears throat> there's one particular one about, mm, I'd say, 75% of the way through where I was like, realized afterwards, yeah, I kind of showed them this whole thing I was working on that I didn't want to tell anyone. But nobody noticed. Moo ha ha. You know. <clears throat> Totally don't go back and watch those and find it, but uh, yeah. Okay, so we're back to here. Um, so I did fix those pieces. Um, I did say the payload here, we had to fix something in the payload because the payload broke when it separated and that's not good. So I think the big problem here is the payload um, ejection system, which is, I think in here, yeah. It's mass times 10, mass times 10 which makes sense if the mass was massive. Um, but since we said the mass was only 10 tons, that's only about 100 force. And 100 force with something this big, if it's not in space, um, is basically going to hit stuff. So I'm going to say the mass is 20 tons. And I'm going to bump up this to 20. Which, yes, I'm basically putting in four times the amount. Um, but I definitely want it to separate. And... I also need to figure out how to get the engines into the second stage. So I'm going to go here and that is all one piece, right? It is. Okay. So let's add the engines into this stage here. Uh, just simply because we need them to get this thing into space. Um, and in space is where this thing's going to separate, etc. Without it, we, we run into a lot of problems trying to test things. Um, cause we could see there that the first stage actually worked really well. Um, other than making sure I make it clear where to put pieces, um, that kind of works. So 
we're going to go look at some photos of the sea dragon, which I have where? Screenshots. Well, we can take assets. We don't need to. We, we're not going to need this until later. We're going to go screenshots into my reference images and then everyone else avert your gaze. Don't look at this while I try to find it. Um, with all the uh, cough stuff that I might be looking at doing at some point. <laughs> and we're just going to find the sea dragon, which I say is should be easy S, but then everything is S in this thing. So we space this and space that. Okay. There we go. Okay, so there's three engines that go one, two, three like that. So we need to add a triangle there, and then we need to sort of put a line there and a line there um, to sort of do that. And then... Yeah, we'll put the RCS system in later, that's fine. So three triangles, a little thing like that. Um, so there's one, two, three, and I guess there's a fourth motor on the other side. Um, so that's not too hard. Um, now, the next question is, and we're gonna jump over here. We're gonna go Sea Dragon, second stage, engines here and we're going to go to our wiki source and the wiki source is going to say the second is powered by ooh, quite a bit um and then it doesn't tell us anything else about the engines than that okay cool so 59 million newtons all right we're going to open up here probably should do this and then divide it by 9.81 and it's Six million, is it really six million Newtons? No, this can't be right. I think I have to divide by a thousand. Six thousand makes a lot more sense. Okay, six thousand fourteen. All right, six thousand fourteen. I think I remember that number. Okay, so we're going to add that into this thing here. I'm just going to actually create a little engine code for it. Um, probably not the smartest thing to do, but um, it's the fastest. I know when I tell people don't do something, they're probably going to do it, but that's okay. Um, I don't know what the ISP on this is. I'm going to say it's 200. It's probably better than that. Um, zero, zero is fine. I need a flow module. Flow. It's going to use liquid fuel. There we go. It is. Um. Shoot. It is local and it is surface, because I think this carries fuel. We're gonna say surfaces for right now. Does the tank actually have? No, this tank doesn't have any actual fuel in it. Okay. Cool. Um, we're going to add another one here. I'm going to call this the heat holder. You know what? Yeah. We're going to do that slightly differently. Engine. Okay. Okay. So we need some parts, and this is probably where I should have done something a little bit differently, but that's okay. Um, surface is required. We're going to go with the tank surface. Okay, cool. And we're going to go to our engines. Doo -ba -doo -ba -doo. Where are the engines? Here's the engines. And I'm going to steal this one here. Uh, copy that. I'm going to go back to the Sea Dragon. Second stage engines. There we go. There's our flame holder. And our flame holder is going to go into a nozzle in a second. And it's going to give us a whole pile of errors because it needs um, specific code that I haven't put in here yet. Right. So it needs, in particular, it needs this one here. Throttle. Now it's happy. Yay, it's happy. Um, it's missing that one, that's fine. It's missing that one, that's fine, okay. Um, flame, flame, glow, okay. And we're gonna move this guy here 
over to here. And we're just making this very quickly just so we can, again, it's going to be a tight visual for the engines on. And then we can make it look nicer a little bit later. There we go. And we'll just copy paste it because we're going to go here. So 13 and we're going to go, I guess it's that like that. Okay, cool. Done. Um, obviously there's a triangle here in the middle that we need to add. And we need, as I said, making some changes here and there. And I may actually put the engine separate from this stage. Uh, let me know what you think about that. And how many parts have I made? I have made one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, one, two, three, eight parts for the dragon so far. Um, but in total, meh, let's not count that. It's going to take a while. Um, but there you go. So that's there. Uh, the engine's going to go. It needs a heat holder. So we're going to add a thing. We're going to call it heat holder. We'll actually add in heat later um, into this part. Uh, but for right now, we just need it so the engine won't break. And we'll go like this. And we'll go heat holder. There we go. And we just need to put in a gimbal and en engine on, throttle on, heat on. Okay. So we have throttle. We have here, we need two variables in the Boolean. There's engine on and gimbal on like that. And then we need another one. Oops. And it's heat on. I'm going to turn that on for, there we go. And we go to heat, go sorry, the engine. And we can go and, oops, gimbal on, engines on, throttle, and the heat on. And we filled up all the different things. The gimbal does not have a move function yet uh, because we don't have one. So we're going to add a move, oops. Move module right here. Um, it's going to be blank right now. We're not going to have it do anything, um, but we have it there. So it's happy. The code is happy. And then it says the old mass. And this is what we have to be cautious of. Since we added it as an engine, we do need to put the mass here. The mass is 493. So we do have to type it in there. There we go. So this should be good. So we're going to go and try to launch this and see if the, we can get this into space now and if that's all going to work. So we can test the upper stage and then consider what else we need to do to make this, again, as functional as possible because we still need to add, we still, well, we have to fix these engines here and we also have to add an engine at the bottom and then we have to add the buoyancy system, which given that uh, Steph is actually making an ocean, um, how timely is that? Um, that is super helpful because, uh, the ocean I was working on was neat, but it looks like Steph has taken it to a new level. So congrats for him. That means that hopefully he'll launch that before this or at the same time. And we can actually launch this from an ocean, which would be great because it's called the sea dragon for a reason. So um, I should be using different polygons for each engine. Uh, and that's what I'll do when I sort of build the quote nozzles. I mainly put that together as a, um, this is how big it should be um, in the first episode. Cause I wanted to make sure the sizing was more or less correct. Um, we can see here that uh, we're gonna turn the gimbal on. Apparently it was off. Um, not that it does anything. And we can see here that it has mass thrust efficiency. Um, again, we have all these, engines at the bottom here that we're going to replace with a giant engine in probably another 20 minutes or so, maybe less. Um, and then we have this whole thing. And then again, we have to figure out why this doesn't match up because that just looks odd, but yeah. So we're going to launch. It says it's too heavy. I still don't know why it's doing that, uh, but we're going to launch anyway, because we do know we have enough thrust and maybe fix the LES. I haven't figured out quite what's wrong with it yet, but sure. And we're just going to 
ignore that. Just totally ignore that. That's not something you need to see. I guess at this point we could probably stage the rocket. A little bit anyway. And the engine's not going. Oh, I forgot to add the engine code in. Shoot. Yeah, that's just going to explode things in the back. Okay. All right, we got to do that. Stake number one. Anyone keeping count? I'm going to say stake number one. So in here, we have it set to resource module. Um which shows us the resource. That's not actually what we want, we want it to do when you click on it. What we actually want to do is switch. So we do need to find that resource module and, and get rid of it. Um, and this is where we're going to probably adjust the tank. The, the, the tank is going to come down here and then the engines will add on top. Um, so I'm actually going to delete. I don't want to delete the tank yet because it's our visual guide. But I want to find, where is it? The fuel. It's in here, is it? There it is. So we're going to remove that. There we go. So that's 498. 498 that we took out. Tons of fuel. We probably have to add that back at some point, but that's okay. Um, and then I'm going to change this control here. Scene is going to go to engine. And we're going to go engine module toggle the engine and then once again we're going to uh, do that so that the engine will actually run this time instead of telling us that it has fuel which is not use and the cargo bay is on the wrong side I'm thinking that's possibly what it is um, we're gonna have to figure that out um, but right now we're just trying to make the secondary engine go and then what we'll do is we'll, we'll finish making the engine look nice uh, the secondary engine and then we'll make the uh, fuel system come down and that way it'll look more accurate rather than what it currently looks like which is kind of eh, not so pretty but uh, yeah it's not a huge it's not a huge problem um, but uh, we'll fix that in a second I just want to make sure that it actually launches um, in space and then check the fairing in space because obviously if you eject the fairing that size in the atmosphere it's gonna blow up your rocket um, but I want to make sure that if I eject it in space it doesn't blow up your rocket. <laughs> that is my logic. When things don't blow up the rocket. All right, continue build. And now this is mass thrust, etc. Okay, cool. All right, we're going to launch this and we're going to see. Go. And again, just a quick little staging. This thing turns like a boat. <laughs> All right. The engine sits it's on. Engine off, engine on, come on. The engine says it's on, I press the button, but it's not firing. Okay, let's look and see what we got here. Um, do, 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 do. Uh, exception object not set to something. So we have a problem, where is the problem? Uh, yeah, in the engine module, it's not doing anything. Okay. So when things don't work like this, it means that there's something wrong in the module. Obviously, um, we're not seeing any flames, so there is no throttle being kicked out by the engine. 
Uh, we also note the engine is not using any fuel, so that is not great. And again, if we hit this, it's going to break apart and hit things. Um, and But that does mean that our capsule is released. At this point, I don't have any control, or do I? Oh, this thing still has control. Okay. I need to take that out. Awesome sauce. Okay. So we're going to figure out this engine thing and we need to take control out of that because that section should not have control. Okay. Why did the engine not go? All right. So engine modules there has gimbal gimbals on doesn't that doesn't do anything because it's there. Hello. I guess we could do this. Um, But it got angry at me now. Why did it get angry? All right, so um, mass, mass is there. Oh, it's got a wet mass. We can get rid of that. rid of stuff that we don't need here, which is fuel percentage we can get rid of. That's all there, okay. The skin tag is just on the tank, okay. Huh. The tank is just the tank, there's nothing in here. I, I stripped out the, the relevant code. I put the engine in here. Okay, it's negative surfaces. The surface does have fuel on it, so it should go. I just need to make sure this is yeah, attachment surfaces. Okay. So I have to check the. Yeah, it wasn't giving me an error on fuel. Uh, flame. All these things have what they need. Okay. And a second flame holder, same thing. Just there. I guess we could add in um, a flame if we wanted to. I don't think it needs it, but we can add it in very quickly. Go find an actual flame holder, heat holder, whatever. Copy the heat hit box, and we'll go back to Sea Dragon. All right, so this is how you just do this. Go like that. There's heat hitbox added in. We're going to go to zero that out. Um, we're going to say, what was it? 25 degrees, I think is what it was. Yep, there we go. Move it sideways. Oh, it's not 25. What's the flame holder? 15 degrees, 15.5, seven, seven. Okay. Um, and then we're going to go down here. We're going to say distance three. And we're gonna say this is probably gonna be 12, no, 15, which means it's negative 7.5, okay. And then we do that and we copy it like that. Second one there and we go negative and we go negative, there you go. Now you got heat coming out of this, those. They are flame triggered. This is holding a flame trigger. Um, I'm gonna call it parts. Uh, nope, this object only. And hopefully the engine's gonna be happier with that. Um, the heat holder there, old mass is there on. Well, technically it doesn't have a gimbal, so let's just take the gimbal out. Maybe that was giving us some problems. No, you know what? It probably does have a gimbal. Probably need to gimbal this engine. Blurg, gimbling the engine. And there's a bunch of random head things and wine in the chat. I don't know why, but okay. Um, that's always interesting. Is that like eight bits? Cheers, cheers. I guess it's cheers. Somebody said something. Maybe it's somebody's birthday. I don't know. Maybe your birthday soon. Who knows? Um, I'm just looking at this thrust position. This should work. Why does this not work? And then over here, mass. Okay. Well, the mass is now less because it's just the engines, but uh, 
For now, we're just leaving it in. Gimbal on. Save the engine on. Trigger. Uh, save the mass. Throttle, you don't have to save because it's controlled. Okay. Let's see if this magically somehow fixed that. But not that complicated. <laughs> so, <clears throat> um, oh, um, I should take this time. I've got my list of things to mention while I'm doing this. Uh, the Curse Rocket contest is coming up this weekend. Uh, last count, I think we had uh, 15, 13 or 15 rockets uh, in there. Basically, come up with the craziest looking rocket and put it in. Although I did have one person submit something that was absolutely massive. Please don't do that. Um, we're coming up with the craziest rockets, not can you crash my computer? Um, <clears throat> uh, so yeah, craziest rockets, um, cursed rockets, whatever you want to call them. Uh, that's coming up this Sunday. I'm going to try to launch them and see which ones I can put into orbit. Um, there's going to be some kind of vote in something. And I think I had an idea for a prize. I wrote it down somewhere on a sticky note. I'm going to have to find it. Um, and I'll let you guys know about that probably on Friday or Saturday. Um, and again, Friday, Saturday, my time, which may be weird time on for you guys. Um, but I'll let you guys know about that coming in the discord and yeah, uh, that should be fun. A lot of explosions, a lot of craziness. There is some talk. Uh, some people did suggest that maybe I should, uh, release the, uh, Ent, space Ent pack or something like that. Um, but uh, right now I'm working on the additional spacecraft parts. So stuff may be coming um, sooner than later, but fair warning, November, I take to go and uh, write a novel because I'm crazy in November. That's NaNoWriMo. So I'll be doing some updates and stuff, but November will be very quiet. And then December will be... Uh, a little crazy. Um, December is going to be request month, I think. So be be ready for that, because uh, when I open that up, it's going to be who wants things and what. And basically, if you can come up with a request, I could do it in a day. Y you might end up getting it. So stuff exploded. And that's not good. Uh, we're going to revert to launch and try to figure out what exploded and why. There is no reason for anything to explode. Nothing, nothing whatsoever. What exploded? Oh, there it is. So, if you're wondering what's going on here, we can revert to launch here. These are still not working, but the heat boxes are there. And as soon as we got off off the ground, they started hitting stuff. Hang on a second here. There it is. So the second stage rockets overheated and exploded. Huh. Man, that's messed up. Since this still has the controller. The way that goes. But, uh, yeah. Okay, so that stage there is really broken. And that still explodes and blows up everything. Goody. Apparently, it detached the heat shield. Huh. Okay, so there's a lot of things that are not working. And for some reason, I don't have control over the rocket for whatever reason. Okay. Um. So, yeah, we're having some fun tonight. All right, so we're going to get these engines to work. 
um, lots of explosions there, um, and this kind of just went nuts. Now, I put these two heat holders far enough away, they shouldn't be affecting anything. I'm going to call this uh, just default. Because these, these, these shouldn't be heating up, because it started heating up this engine. Uh, second stage rockets overheated. Uh, I'm not sure why. Hmm. Um, but I do know I need to add into one of these codes here. Uh, and I'm going to add it here, like so. Uh, it's going to be active. It's going to be the heat holder. Doesn't matter which um, of these ones, because they both do the same thing. Heat holder. And I'm going to just say it's active, deactive, like so. Um, oh, have a good evening, uh, Felix. I know it's a bit late where you are, so thank you for joining us so far. And um, yeah, so we just added the heat holder into one of the one of the flame holders. Now shuts the heat holder on and off. So if the flame's not on, the heat's not on. Um, that hopefully will solve the overheating problem, but we still don't have the engine turning on problem solved. And I am scratching my head on that one. It shouldn't be that this number is too big. Huh. Hmm. Oh, flow rate. No, no, flow rate's supposed to be zero. It gets controlled by this. Hmm. Hmm. All right. So we're just going to go here and have a quick look at an engine. Um, engine, engine, engine code. Liquid fuel resource, yeah, okay. Surface, okay, that's fine. Um, see, this, this is the older code, it doesn't have the thing. Um, oh, I don't have the torque in there. So I'm gonna copy that. I have to add torque, and I don't have the audio module either, okay. The audio module. Hmm. Plays into the font, okay. And we're going to go back here to Sea Dragon. Second stage motors are here. Okay. In the engine, we're going to add that torque. Its component is new. And we're going to say that it is gimbal on. Has that on there. Okay. Um, throttle times seven is fine. Well, maybe not seven, maybe 70. It's a big object to move. And uh, so the problem is mass. So I'm going to do something different here. I'm just going to delete the mass off that. It's going to be set anyway. So maybe two things trying to set the mass is causing me a problem. Um, no other weird code. So next thing we're going to do is, I think that's probably good. I'm going to go to this guy here. No. Okay. Um, I'm going to duplicate this guy here. I'm going to delete that node. I'm going to delete this node. And I'm going to say this guy is two. And I'm going to generate mesh. And I say this guy here is zero. Uh, generate a mesh like that. Yeah, I'm getting close. Okay. Five, maybe? That yeah, man, don't make me do it. Okay, there we go. Yeah, it's gonna be, doesn't really matter what that number is. It could be a million. Um, okay, so that gives us there. Well, it needs to be a certain number. And then we want to build another one, duplicate, and we're just going to go here to there. And I'm going to move that guy up to about right there, which is zero, seven. Okay. 
system L zero. Okay. And the width here is 23. It is now, instead of going to be 23, it's going to be one, two, three, four. Multiply by two, because there's two of them. Duh, 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 duh. Oh, it's not 47, come on, seven. Okay, and it's going to be one like that. It's going to be 20. Generate the mesh, and it's going to be 40. I don't know. It's a number. There we go. Cool. Down here to zero, and this is going to be six. Flame holder, copy and paste that there. There we go. That's going to be zero, and this is going to be zero, and it's going to look like that. And it's going to look awful because none of the flames are actually above. Yeah, they're all negative. Okay, so we do need to figure out how to put that above it. I have not had the best of luck doing this. Um, if I go like 100, I don't think it's going to do it, but we'll see. One, and I said a hundred because this thing is so big. Go one hundred, a hundred, and we're just trying to have it so the flames actually are above. Uh, this one won't actually have a heat hit code thing on it. Uh, I might, well, you know, I could probably put it on and show you guys how to correct for that, but uh, yeah, we just don't want it to burn itself because that would be bad um be very bad very bad indeed do not burn yourself with your own thing so in order to avoid that we do need to go here and delete that one so that's just the top two and then this guy here is going to be we're going to pick custom collider. We're going to pick, oh, we need to make another heat box. Duplicate that one. So this is heat box number two. And what we're doing here is we're just going to the, this tank here, which is, hang on, let's try that. This is center nozzle. This guy, nozzles, okay. And this is the center tank. And the center tank is going to have a heat hit box number three. We're going to zero that out. We're going to zero this out like that. Boom, it's right there. And we're going to make sure that this guy here, by going here to collider, we're going to pick number that one there so it doesn't burn itself. Um, the only thing you have to be careful of is if you're doing it this way, is, um, and we'll have to think about this, is that we might have to take that heat box out because if you launch like this, it'll burn the first stage. So we don't want to do that. We do actually need to delete it um, or we will burn the first stage because these fire at the start with the first stage, if I remember correctly. And that would be bad. There we go, okay. No. So, Looking at this, we now have that section here. And if anybody's, this is theoretically what we have right now, but the engine code isn't going the right way. Hmm. So I'm not sure why this is not going above it. So I definitely want it to fire here. Um, so I'll have to figure that one out. I might have to do some reading on that one. Um, if you happen to know the answer, let me know in the chat. Um, but otherwise, I think we're good there. Um, in theory, this engine should work. I'm still a little confused as to why it doesn't. Um, so I'm going to do this. I'm going to copy this component. I'm going to delete the component or remove it. 
and I'm going to move it to the main thing here. Paste component is new. So the engine code is now in the main holder. So I'm just going to go here to scene, pick the whole rocket right there. And I'm going to pick the engine module like so. Ta -da. Okay. So we're going to rebuild this engine and we're going to see if we can actually uh, get it to go in the game. I'm going to rebuild the Space Dragon and it should work relatively well. Woo! And then we will see what's going on. Despite the fact that in the comment section I'm hearing that people want pictures of Prime's feet. What is going on, you guys? Um, I'm showing this lovely modding session here and I have you guys talking about Prime's 252 feet. I do not understand that. And I'm reading through the chat right now on the side here. And yeah. Hmm. Um, yeah, Colton Williams, you might be right. Um, it might be due to the heat. Um, this isn't the first time I've done this kind of engine though, so I think I'm confident it works. But uh, if that doesn't work, yeah, we'll 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 make some adjustments um like that. Let's see if we can get it to go. Because basically I just want this engine to uh fire. Um, I think that's where we're going to get tonight because it's starting to get a little late and I don't want to run too long. I value you guys your time and I will do problem solving um, on my own time and then come back and say, hey, here's how we apply it to the uh, Sea Dragon. So, so step one is I'm going to actually delete everything here um, just because I want to start clean because sometimes when you change code, it doesn't get completely changed in the game. Kind of sounds a weird way to say that, but it's true. I'm going to add in all the components again and realize that everything is, I should fix this, um, off-centered. So that's right. This is, for whatever reason, off by 0.25. There we go. Uh, which means that this guy here coming in is off by, oh no, it's right. If I flip it. Nope. There we go. Okay, so we have the upper stage, which we really haven't done anything with. We have the engine block, which is what's been giving us some trouble. We have this guy here, which other than it having this piece here sticking off the side, seems to actually be working perfectly fine. This section here is also working surprisingly well. Um, so that's great. And then we just don't have the engine at the bottom. Um, so not the end of the world again, uh, but we're going to launch. And I'm just going to basically fire the primary engines here. You can see it says engine on. Uh, we're going to rank that up. And there we go. And it left the bottom part behind. I'm going to call that 50% of a win because it's now working. Uh, we also need to move the flames around, some other stuff, as everything is... Oh, it's because it's shooting up into the atmosphere really, really fast. I'm going to break things. It's gonna, Things are going to get broken. Um, okay, so we need to figure out why the attachment system didn't work for the second stage, not the end of the world. Um, but we want to see if we can get to space. How far? Oh, yeah, we're going into space. Okay, so we're going to speed up time a bit here. All right, so now that we're in space with our horribly burned rocket, I'm going to eject the fairing. And other than the fact it kicks it to the side, it's working. Okay. Cool. So now we're going to switch here. This thing still weighs 500 and something tons. It should weigh a lot less because it's used up all the fuel, so we're going to have to correct for that. Um. And then we'll uh, see um, what we can do. But uh, yeah, so we've got it theoretically working. Um, work to build. Uh, we're just going to double check here that see why that piece just shot up. Because theoretically, that should go like this. Oh, hang on. There. Because we want that touching. And that goes like that. Okay. So we're going to have to probably make that part a little bit more um, obvious in the next episode. 
and we're going to go back here. We're just going to again slap some giant engines on the bottom. It's not going to be perfect. It doesn't need to be perfect. We, we're using the second engines as the primary boost anyway. But I want to see if we can put the whole rocket into space and actually... Um, eh. Do it this way. There. There. And there. Okay. And then we're going to go stage one, two, three, four. Okay, that's stage one is all the engines. Stage two is separate this guy. Stage three is going to be break this guy apart. Stage four, we're going to fire this. And then stage five is we're going to release it. And then obviously stage six is this guy here. And in theory, this all should work. And then um, we can go from there. So let's see how well this all goes. So launching system. Okay, it's running, it's launching. It's turning upside down. I'm gonna turn that down. Hopefully we're gonna correct the uh, altitude. <laughs> oh, okay, so the rocket's got some misbalancing. And part of that's probably because the the engines on the side. But that's okay. We can we can solve that. We still have plenty of fuel left. We've actually used this, all the fuel at the top. Okay. Okay. So we're gonna hit uh, this. And it's going to open the bottom. And that's going to, over the next few seconds, cause the, the bottom to fall out. There it is. Good. So other than fixing the mass, um, there we go. We, we actually have a functional rocket. We do need to fix some things, but we have a functional rocket. Look at that. And then as we go into space, there we are. We can go to the next stage, which is going to apparently cause things to break sideways. That's odd. Okay, we'll look into that next episode. This is firing the boosters, but we don't see the flames because I turned it off. So I need to fix that. Okay, not a worry. This is all totally 100% fixable. And then that's gone. Okay, and then we have our capsule here, and we saw that the capsule can get down to the ground pretty easy. So that's what we're going to work on in episode four. Uh, it might be next Wednesday. Um, be sure to keep an eye on the channel. Uh, I'm going to post that up uh, when it becomes available. I just have to check my scheduling and see when I'm going to be able to fit that in. So yay, we actually do have a functional rocket. It does go up. Uh, we do have a few things that we need to fix here or there. Um, but we're into sort of the end game of saying next episode, build the bottom engine. So we actually have it, um, build the buoyancy system, um, basically make it so that you click it, it gets heavier. You click it, it gets lighter. That'll allow us to, uh, change it and float it in the water so that we can orient the rocket upward, uh, when we want to launch. And then we just have to fix some of this stuff here, which is mainly just changing the mass numbers and making sure that this, everything's the right mass. And, you know, we'll get into some visual improvements. But, you know, when we talk about visual improvements, you know, there's some people who are neurotic. Uh, and then there's some people who are really good at it. And then there's me. So hopefully that will work. Um, so thank you for watching. And I will see you guys all later. And uh, that's it. And, uh, oh, uh, last thing I should probably do is I'm going to post this in the chat. Um, because people need to know about this and we can go over here and copy a link to paste it here. Um, prime, prime two, five, two and I are, uh, collabing on, um, a, uh, little project together. And, uh, you may have seen little notes about it with me talking about capsules and everything, but, uh, yeah, 
I'm working on the capsules and he's working on the rockets. And this gives you sort of a little preview of what's coming um, exactly when. We still haven't quite decided yet because um, we're still kind of working on our parts. But the answer is soon. Very, very soon. So definitely uh, stay in touch. Um, definitely check out the trailer video. And uh, yeah, let us know if there's any comments, suggestions, etc. that you might have. Uh, because once that's done, it's done. And uh, if you want things, now's the time to ask. All right. That's it for me. See you in the next stream.